All right, for today's lesson, I'm going to be delving into the world of BlueJay. So, um, JDoodle is good for doing little snippets of Java, but at some point it reaches its kind of limit. And what I want to do today is show everybody how to write to a file. And in order to do that, we need some sort of Java development environment that will actually have access to our hard drive. And so, um, BlueJ is actually made by the same people. If that looks familiar to you, it's because these are the same people that made Greenfoot. And so BlueJ is a program that kind of takes us closer to more traditional style Java programming. Uh, it's very popular in the uh, world of computer programming and it's a free install. So right here you can see this is open source. If you have a Windows computer, you can go here. If you have a Mac, you can go here. If you have something else, it's over here. Um, and you can quickly download and install and you can kind of start working in BlueJ um, as we go forward from here. So this is what BlueJ looks like. It's uh, BlueJ and I click on it down here and you can see that it looks like Greenfoot code. Um, the colors are the same and everything. It doesn't have a stage. Um, it's, it's kind of like JDoodle where you have a console and we're going to make things um, export to, you know, we can put things to, we can do the system that it would print line and uh, we're going to learn how to read files and write files in BlueJ. Um, over here you can see there's another icon for me. If you're using a Mac, you'll see a couple when it's in use. And this is my kind of main area that I can use where I can make a whole bunch of classes and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you how to work through it. Um, but today we're going to learn how to write a file. So, um, right here is where I can put all of my Java classes. And this is very similar to what you did in Greenfoot. It's just that in Greenfoot, the Java classes we were using had pictures associated with them. For example, a hero or an alien, and you could put them on the screen and make them move and do something. This is similar, except the classes that we're going to make are basically just going to have code. They're not going to have pictures that you can animate and you know we're not going to make games here we're going to learn a little bit more um so if i double click on this read and write and the way i made this i hit new class i called it here i'll show you a new class and i typed in read and write file and i leave this alone i leave this alone i hit okay and i get that uh, then when you double click you can take out everything except for so you'll see a bunch of stuff in the middle you can take it all out and you're going to replace it. And again, this should look a lot like Greenfoot, so hopefully it's somewhat familiar. Um, what I did is I made this class, and it has to say this. This is a key, a key um, method in Java. And what this means is that this is the entry point of my program. This is where it starts. Okay. Um, and for me, I also I should mention before I forget, I imported the Java.io library. And this is what imports all of the, the, uh, the things we need to read and write to files. IO stands for input output. And when I put the star there, it means bring in all of the input output stuff so that I can use um, those libraries. And those are going to, that's what we need when we try to use things like the buffered reader and later the buffered writer and the file reader. Okay, so let's go through some code. And I fully commented this code, so a lot of times I'm just going to be reading what's already there. Uh, but I did that so you could reference it and hopefully understand it better. So here's the main, and that means that this is the entry point to my code. The first line it's going to see is this one right here when I run my code. And this says create a blank array of strings. So that right there indicates array of strings. Remember, if I don't have those, it's just a normal string. So I want to make an array of strings called my names, and it's going to be a new string array that holds 10 things. So this will hold 10 strings, okay? Right, and when I start it, it's empty, but it's, it's gonna have the ability to hold 10 different strings. Now we see the try that we've talked about before, and what that means is that we wanna try to do all of this stuff, but if anything goes wrong, we're going to catch it and we're just going to tell the user, hey, something went wrong. So again, this is an error check-in method. Try catch is nothing more than error checking that says we want to try to do all this, but if at any point something goes wrong, we're just going to print out something went wrong and end the program. Okay. 
So in here, we open what's called, or create, sorry, what's called a buffered reader. And the buffered reader acts as a cursor that reads the file for us. So you can think of the buffered reader as something that goes and looks into this file and starts reading stuff from it. Now you'll notice there's names.txt, so let's go find that. And so I've called this read and write file and I told it to live on my desktop. So I'm gonna hit my files here, I'm gonna to go to desktop, and you can see here, instance of read and write file. There it is, right there, okay? So I'm gonna go in here and you'll see there are some things already in here. There's a names.txt file to read from. And I'm just gonna delete this one for now. So names.txt is a text file. And you can see I've got 10 different names in there. And my daughter was with me when I was doing it, so these are all the names of the Ninjago characters that she loves so much. Um, and my program is going to open that file because it lives, my program knows it's there because it's in the right place. It has to be in your project file. So I have a project file and the names.txt file is right there with it. And so it's gonna read information from that file. And br.readline says read a line. So let's, I'll show you how the cursor thing works. Basically, when you open up br, it starts here. And so when I, we tell it, okay, this right here means read a line, and this part means, and we're gonna store it in a string called txt. So we're gonna read a line, and what's gonna happen is that line, that one right there, chi, is gonna be stored in txt, okay? Um, so now, this line right here will take txt, which is chi the first time through, and it stores it in the array at a particular index. At the very beginning, index is zero. So in other words, the zeroth spot of the my names array is now going to become chi, because that's what we read. Now we read the next line. So the next line is col. And so it's read col, it increases index by one, so index goes from zero to one. And then it says, well, is txt nothing? And no, it's it's coal, right? So it's not nothing, and so we do it again. This time index is one, so we put coal into the array at the first spot, the, the oneth spot. So at this point, we have chi in the zeroth spot, and now we have coal in the oneth spot. And then we read another one. So now we read Zane, and continue and continue and continue. And eventually we're gonna read Skylar. And when we read Skylar, we put Skylar in the last spot, which will be the ninth spot of the array my names. And then after Skylar, it's gonna to try to read another line, but there's no line to be read. And that's gonna mean that txt is going to be null. And since txt is null, it won't do this again and it will get out of the loop and it will close the file. So after running all of this code, what happens is all of these names are put into an array in the computer's memory that now I can use in my programming to do stuff with. Oops. Okay, so basically this code reads information from a text file and puts the information into an array. So that's the first part. Now, this part right here, it simply proves that it's working. So this part will take all of the stuff from the array, it, go, it loops through all of the stuff in the array, and just prints it out to the screen, okay? So this will just do a system.out.print line and show that the array is working. So I'm gonna show you how to run this now. So in order to run the file, to actually see if it works, I have to compile it. So now those gray lines go away. And then I right click on it. And I say I want to run the void main method. So I click here. And there, you can just hit OK here. I can put in parameters, but I'm not gonna do that. So I hit OK and watch what happens. See, it spits out all of the names that it just read. And I've done this in the past. That's why you're seeing it before. Um, but I can clear this just in case you don't believe me. I'll clear it and then we'll run it again. 
and you will see in the terminal window there. So it successfully reads all the stuff from the text file and I can spit it out to the screen. Great. Now, what we want to, we did this a little bit last week, so what I want to build on here is how do we take information and write it to a file? So I'm going to close my window here and I'm going to go back, take this out just for one second. All right, so now we look at the next try and keep in mind this is all still in the main. Okay, so we've tried to read a file, it worked. We spit the file or we spit the contents of the array out to the screen, it worked. So now we're down to here. And what we want to do here is we want to write information out to a file. So here it says buffered writer instead of buffered reader. And it says file writer instead of file reader. And it says reverse names.txt. So we have a loop that's going to go backwards. Notice it starts at the highest index. And it's going to keep going, decreasing x. Um, and it's going to write the contents of the array to bw, which is really representing this reverse names.txt. In other words, we are going to create a file called reverse names.txt. And because we're creating it with a buffered writer and a file writer, that means that we are able to write information to the file. So the file is going to start out blank, but then we're going to go through the loop and we're going to write out the last name which I think was Skyler, and then the next one, which is Lloyd, and then the next one, which is Chen. So we're going to reverse through the array, and ultimately we're going to create a text file, brand new text file that never existed before, which is going to have all the names, but in reverse order, because it's going to go through the, rever uh, the array backwards. Okay, And just like we did before, we're going to try to do all this stuff, but if something goes wrong, then we're going to catch the error and say, hey, something went wrong. Okay, so just to prove how this works, notice there is not a file in here called reverse names. Okay, nothing there called reverse names. Now I'm going to run this, see if I can get them open at the same time. Okay, I'm going to run this. Hit OK, and keep your eyes over here. And you can see after running it, there's a file now called reverse names.txt. That's because as soon as this line gets executed, it runs, or sorry, it creates a file called reverse names.txt. And if this loop worked properly, what we should see is we should see the names of the ninjas in reverse order. And there you go. So reverse names, Skylar, Skylar, Lloyd, Lloyd. So it worked. Fantastic. So that is how you can A, read from a file, but you can also write information out to a file as well. You create a buffered writer, and then you can write contents of an array, or you can just write out a string um, by, by using this code. Okay. So what I'd like you to try to do today is I'd like you to try to do exactly what I did uh, and just get used to how this works, especially since you're going to download and install BlueJay. Uh, so you're going to make a text file just like I did. It doesn't have to be the ninja names. It can be names however you want them to be. But you're going to put something in a text file, and then you're going to try to read it the way I did, and then you're going to try to write it in reverse order the same way I did. Okay, I hope it goes well.